What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to easily and automatically create and fill word templates in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, now before we get started right away with the tutorial, I would like to show you the results so that you know what we're getting into here. This is an example template here on the right, a Word document, and then we also have a logo here and a Python script. And what happens when I run the Python script is it creates a uh, an additional Word file based on this template. And this essentially, if I move this and I put this here, you're going to see this is now the filled template. We have a project title. We have it here again. We have a deadline. We have a person in charge. We have dedicated money. We have a to-do list table filled and we have the company logo. So that is a very basic example, but this is what we're going to learn how to do easily today in Python. Okay, so we're going to start from scratch. Now, the only thing I have here in my working directory is a logo.png file, which is the neural nine logo and an empty template file, a word file, docx file that has absolutely nothing in it. This is what it looks like. And our goal in this video now is to create a word template and to easily and automatically fill it using Python code. And this, of course, has a number of different use cases, stuff like invoice automation, but also exporting written reports based on the data in your database or something. There are numerous use cases, and some of them can be very powerful. What I want to show you here in general is how to do stuff like this. So how to export basic text, how to also use full loops to fill tables, for example, and also how to export uh, or include images here. So this is what we're going to cover today. And the first thing that we need to do for that is we need to install a couple of packages. One package that we're going to need is going to be the Python dash docx package. Another one is going to be docx TPL for docx template. And we're also going to use pandas because we're going to assume that our uh, data that we want to write into this file, at least the data that we're going to iterate over for the table is going to be in the form of a pandas data frame, because that is oftentimes what we get from CSV files from database tables, we can also get uh, a pandas data frame, we're going to assume that we have some data in this format. So we're going to install these packages, and then we're going to open up a new Python file main.py. And what we want to do now first is we want to define what a template looks like. Now you can play around with that as much as you want. You can see that whatever I do here is going to be quite flexible. You can choose different names, different structures. The basic idea is we use placeholders and placeholders. Let me just use full screen for now. Uh, placeholders are essentially just places in your document where you want to insert something. So for example, I might have some static uh, text here like, uh, I don't know, project templates, uh, document, something like this, then a dash, and then I might have project and then in two curly brackets here, I can specify project underscore name. This is how this works. This is the Jinja two templating engine. It's the exact same thing that flask uses. And the basic idea is we have these double curly brackets to specify that here is a place for a value and the identifier of this or the name uh, of this, the key we could say of this is the project name. So if I want to replace this, I have to specify in my context later on in Python, that I want to overwrite this specific field here. Now I can have this multiple times, it doesn't have to be unique. So I can also say here, uh, let me just increase the font size a little bit here. Let's use 16 for this, let's use 14 here. And let's say overview. And then I can say stuff like project name, colon, and then I can use normal text in double curly brackets. And I can say again, project name. So we have a duplicate field here, but it's not a problem. It's just going to fill it twice. And I can do this now with all sorts of fields, I can do stuff like I don't know, what did I have in the preview deadline person in charge? Let's do that again, person or let's say project deadline. Again, be creative with this apply to your use case, it doesn't matter what exactly you do here, I'm just showing you an example. So project deadline um, is one thing that we can do here. Uh, another one would be, again, person in charge. That is the basic stuff. So just placing these placeholders around and filling them is very easy. That's like the most simple, uh, primitive way in which you can use this templating. So you can just say, put a value here, put a value here, person in charge, let's add one more. And the last one is going to be dedicated uh, budget, let's say. 
and then say dedicated budget. All right, so that is the basic way in which you can use this templating. A more advanced way is to use full loop. So for example, to say I have a dynamic number or a variable number of, let's say to do's or items that need to be bought or uh, something that you want to iterate over and you want to fill a certain format with it, but you don't know how many rows you're going to need, you don't know how many uh, instances of this thing that you're trying to put into this document here into this template here, you don't know how many of them you're going to have, for example, classic use case would be I have to do's or items. And then I have a table down here, I can say insert table uh, with three columns, and I can say, okay, I want to have the to do title, I want to have a description. And I want to have some notes, some additional notes. And then of course, I will have all these different to do's, but I might have two, I might have 200. So I want to have a dynamic uh, way of filling this table. If I just say here to do dot title, it doesn't work because I might have multiple to do's. And even if I do some sort of iteration here, like putting the whole list here, uh, it doesn't really work because it's just going to fill one cell with all the entries. So what we want to use here is a specific iterator with a specific tag. So we want to use curly bracket percent, then no white space. So immediately after the percent TR for table row, and then we want to do four, for example, row, you can choose whatever name you want here. So we have percent TR for row in and then we need a name again. So this is again, one of these key identifiers. For example, it could be to do's, and then percent um, curly bracket closed. Now I want this to be all font size 12. And essentially, I don't put anything into description or notes, I just keep this here in the first cell. And then in the next row, I say, double curly brackets again, and then I say, row dot title, for example, and then I can say here, row dot description. And then I can say here, row dot notes. And of course, what I also need to do is I need to close this. So I say again, percent TR and four. So that is basic Jinja to templating uh, syntax TR is special here for table row. But the basic idea is now this is not going to be rendered as a row, this is not going to be rendered as a row, we're going to have the rows based on this here. So we iterate over all the to do's that we passed, this has to be then, of course, a a uh, list of dictionaries, so a list of JSON objects that have title description and notes, but we're just iterating over those and we create a new row for each of those. This is how you would do something like this. And then finally, we're going to have a placeholder logo, which is going to be the image that we want to render into this template. So let's just add a space here so that it's consistent. Uh, let's save that, let's close that. And now we're going to fill that in Python. And it's actually quite simple, we're going to start by importing pandas as PD, we're going to also import from docx dot shared mm, uh, which is for millimeters. And then we're going to also say, uh, this is only relevant for the image, by the way, then we're also going to say docx tpl. So from docx tpl import docx template and inline image, which is of course, again, for the image. Now we're going to assume now that we have some data source. So this could be a database, this could be a file, whatever, we're just going to say we have an already loaded pandas data frame, wherever you get this data from, this is different from application to application. But I'm going to just say I have a to do data frame in pandas. And this is based on a dictionary, let's say, and here I have the field title which is a list and I can do stuff like I don't know, by domain, by web hosting. Uh, what did I have before I had? Okay, I don't have this anymore. Oh, yeah, I do have it set up WordPress. And then uh, something like set up payment options. Again, apply this to your use case, you could also have like items, price, quantity or something like this. Um, and then we want to have a description. Now actually, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to say description by domain, let's use lowercase here, by domain for company by web hosting service, let's just add some words here 
set up WordPress uh, for website, I don't know, and then set up payment methods actually uh, like Stripe and PayPal. PayPal. Um, and then finally, we want to ha have also the notes. Now for the notes, we're going to just keep some of them empty, we're going to say no notes here, no notes here, here, we could say also my SQL database, and then compare alternatives for the payment options. All right, so this could be our data frame. And now what we want to do is we want to take this data source that we have, and we want to also render it into a table. So we're going to start here, first of all, by saying the document is equal to the docx template. Now, this is not something I wanted to import. Document is equal to docx template and docx template is based on the file template docx, which I have here in my directory. And then I also want to say the logo is going to be inline image for the document. The file is going to be logo.png. Actually, let's keep it consistent here and use single quotation. Uh, and then I want to say width is equal to millimeters 30 to uh, scale it down a little bit. And then I'm going to say context is equal to the dictionary. And here I'm going to now fill all the fields. So I'm going to say project name is whatever it is. Now, of course, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to provide static strings. In your application, you won't provide static strings, you're going to load the data from a database, from a request from um, a CSV file, whatever you get your data from, you're not going to type it manually, because then you can just type it manually into a document. But now for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to provide the values manually, we're going to say tutorial, project, then we're going to say, project deadline is equal to uh, 2027. Uh, May first, then we're going to say, uh, what was the other one we had person in charge, which is, let's say Mike Smith. And then we had finally, what was it dedicated budget dedicated budget, which could be something like $5,000, for example. Um, and now for the to do's and for the logo, we just need to provide to do's and logo. So for to do's, it's a bit trickier, because we need to get this into the right format, a pandas data frame is not the right format, we want to have a list of dictionaries. So we're going to say to do's underscore data frame dot to dictionary, but we're going to say orient equals records. And then finally, logo is going to be equal to logo. That is our context, we're going to render this context now into the document, we're going to say document render context. And then finally, document save outputs dot doc x. And that is basically it. If I didn't make any mistakes, this should now open uh, or this should now create the file. So let's run this. We have, of course, a syntax problem. Project deadline. What's the problem there? <coughs> of course, I'm missing a comma here. So let's go again. And this should now have created the file. So let's go into the file explorer. Let's go to uh, actually, let's do it the other way around. Let's do it here. Nautilus current directory, let's open the template or the output actually from here. And now let's take a look. There you go. We have tutorial project deadline, Mike Smith here 5k. And we have all the items rendered into the table. And of course, also the logo. So that is a very simple use case. Again, you can use this for an invoice automation system, you can use this for exporting your whole database into Word documents, if you need to, I don't know, uh, provide someone with a list of PDF documents, because of course, what you can do now is you can take these documents, convert them into PDF files. Um, and basically, you know, you can automate this procedure further. I also have on this channel tutorials on how to do that. But that is like how you can easily and automatically fill uh, were templates with Python.
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. If you want to see some projects where I use this uh, feature or this uh, technique, you could say uh, in an actual project, maybe an invoice automation tool or something like that, let me know in the comment section down below. And besides that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.